Hey guys, welcome back to Dual Loaf Games. This is Ron. And I'm Erin. And we have more intrigue and mystery from the Westport Independent. So, what were we getting into last time? What trouble? Oh god, a lot of it. Uh, president uses new biography, Mercury found in the southern docks. Man shot during robbery close to the eastern factories. A uh, new committee to monitor devious content in comic books, fire in apartment complex. What kind of like devious content are they talking about in comic books? Like we actually had something Spider-Man fought crime. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> we actually had something very uh, similar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like in the United States, like back in the day. Tell me about it. So like by the time we got to the 1950s, it had gotten so bad, like a big like it was almost like the clickbait of its time. Like, if you saw horror with anything in, like, a comic book, later in the 50s, that was just completely gone. So one of the big rules is if you wanted to be carried by a chain, your comic could not have horror or something in the title like that. So a lot of comics from the 1950s just didn't have that. Hmm. Yeah, like, th there's a whole <laughs> crazy story behind it. Um, but anyway, new committee to monitor devious content in comic books. Uh, government announced, blah, 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 the, the arse. <laughs> <laughs> the arse praises these actions, looking forward to seeing more responsible content for children. Um, well, what did we decide? Do we want to be rebels or do we want to be, like, loyalists? I don't know, you want to flip a coin or something? Not really, I just want to keep going back and forth, I think. Okay. Just see where we end up. Why not? Let's do this as a loyalist one. Let's see what like happens. Flip a coin in your like imagination. Okay. Well, we did loyalist it. last time. Oh, all right. Let, let's like slam the heck out of these guys. Okay. Mm. Uh, get get rid of this. The comic strips containing vulgarity. Why? Because we're going to slam it the new It says, and committee. dubious political views. Yeah, all right, leave it in, I guess. Uh, its goal is to ensure the nation's youth are exposed to only wholesome content. That'd be a really boring comic book. Can you imagine if Superman just, like, had tea with uh, Lex Luthor? No. He's just like, oh, this is quite nice. You've very much changed my... Unless my they get to eat things. tiny finger sandwiches and, like, very large hats. Sure, why not? That's what I want. That's my comic book. Or if Batman actually drank tea with the Mad Hatter and then the Mad Hatter didn't, like, poison Batman's parents didn't it. die. Spoiler alert. Sorry, we'll put that on the screen. <laughs> the spoiler alert, not just dead parents. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Help. It's like the dead Help. parents just flash up on the screen. <laughs> oh, no. And, like, you could have saved us. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Um. Well, let's look at the robbery. I just want to put Alfred on screen. He's so nice and wholesome, isn't he? Or is he really scary and sketchy? I love the uh, the animated series, Alfred. Mr. Wayne. <laughs> it's like the worst accent on like American TV ever, but <gasps> I still love it. How rude. You're a sass bag. Go to go to man shot during robbery. Yeah. Let's see that. Innocent man shot in violent robbery by Eastern factories. A man shot in a robbery near the Eastern factories. The perpetrator acted alone and wore a goat mask. <laughs> I just want to leave that. I just want to be like, done. They wore a goat mask. Whenever he's like robbing people, he's like, Meh. no, no, no. <laughs> he's no. like bleeding at them. The victim was shot in his left arm, resulting in minor injuries. Police apprehended the robber shortly after. This is kind of a boring story. Like, I, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to work that's for gonna, our paper. That's not going to sell papers. I know I've said previously, if you put that in the paper, people will read it. But I don't think anybody will read that. Um. Well, if we're trying to go against the government, I think it's probably best to, like, maybe throw the president under the bus in this particular situation all right is like this makes him look really bad today the president's new biography the will and per perseverance um was released 
Biography has been said to be the most faithful retelling of the president's path into politics. So far, however, it has received some mixed criticism regarding its factual accuracy. In the biography, the president takes credit for several reforms made by his predecessors. Mm. What do you think? Maybe that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Criticism. Yeah, why not? Okay. Societal it is, I guess. Dang. No, I think we should do it this way. And then what do we get here? That's pretty good. Maybe that? Yeah, I think that'll work out well. Let's try it. So I went on this date yesterday. Ha, huh, just kidding. Oh. Oh, nice. How did it go? Well, she, she hates me. <laughs> well, I wasn't stood up at least. So what happened? Turned out she didn't think of it so much as a date. Mm. Apparently, she had a boyfriend, and she brought him along. Oh my god! Aww, how polite of her. <laughs> At least she didn't get stood up. Did you notice that, like, the shadow is still here from when Frank was still here? Yeah. That's funny. Wow, um, that's harsh. It was just real awkward. But at least I found a, a Lindor bell on my way home. So I've got that going for me, which is nice. Oh my god, is that a Caddyshack reference? <laughs> I couldn't tell you, I don't know. Week 11. Oh, we're getting close. Okay, so just like south and eastern, that's where we live now. Look at the north, they've gone up a lot though too. They have. Oh no. Suspicion again. Oh. And we lost popularity again. Yeah, but look how People like crime. Right. Told you. Everybody likes a good crime. Pulp writer starts cold. Whoa. Um, pirate radio station gets shut down. First legal casino in the Western District. Movie Star Writes Biography calls it My Lonely Place in Greatness. Whoa, <laughs> somebody's um, let it go to their head. <laughs> unemployment rises. Rebels influence Westport Papers and um, Police Arrest Union Chairman. I think we need to read this because it might be about us. Police scare populace with conspiracy theories. <clears throat> Today, police started an investigation into rebel influences within Westport's media. This is due to a large number of suspected rebel letters being found at the now vacated Northern Herald. Uh oh. Signed Friendly Rebel Neighbor, several of the letters contain references to various acts of terror. This is why the public culture bill is needed, the president stated to the press. So what do we want to do? Do we want to be rebels again? Do we want to, you know, throw the police under the bus in this scenario? What do we want to do? Um, throw the police under the bus. Let's do it. Because like, right. I still want our foreign police to have jobs. Yeah, our three employees, since Frank is gone. He's always going to be in my heart. His shadow will always be on the wall. Yeah, for real. Like, <laughs> that, that's gross, if this place... Does he just sit there the whole day, like, while the air conditioner blows dust on him, and that's why there's an imprint? Maybe somebody drew him. Like, like one of their French girls. <laughs> His heart will go on. Um, Near, far, wherever you are, Frank will be there. Anyways, back to what we were doing. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So, let's see. Hmm. Nah. Nah. Let's just do that. Okay. Why not? Rebel. Whatevs. 
Uh, pulp writer starts call, or radio station, legal casino, movie star, unemployment rises, uh, police arrest union chairman. That, that seems like it could be a good story. Uh, union, union leader excuses protesters' violence while blaming police. Or police arrest union chairman. No, because like most people like unions, I would think. Back in this time they did. I don't know about now. Um, Ernest Lynch was arrested today for suspected rebel ties. Organizing many of Westport's recent protests, Lynch has become a hero of the working class. The protests have been accused of disturbing the peace and promoting violence. Lynch claims that the violence in question was self-defense against attacking police officers. Rank the bottom one from the record, I think. Are we on the side of the police now? Sure. Okay. I mean, we we lost an employee, and also we gained like 17 suspicion. I don't know, something like that. Just tell me what you want to get rid of, and then I'll throw it in there. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. You're going to tell me, I'm going to tell you which one I want to get rid of, and then you're going to leave it in. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um been accused, blah, 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 disturbing the peace and promoting violence, leave that in, organizing many of West Point's recent protests. Uh, strike that. There we go. I, th I think that's how we do. That's how we do. I'm, I'm curious about this. Former author turns profit. Pulp writer P.E. Roberts has gained some new popularity by claiming to have unlocked psychic powers. Offering yeah. to share his secrets for a price, the author has opened a new institute in his home. This is due to the claims that his powers can only be used inside of his home. <laughs> he has already received several <laughs> applications from the people of Westport. Oh no. Uh, strike the last one, I think. Okay. So maybe I say we leave that maybe and that makes him look bad. Yeah. All right. You know what they say. This is a newspaper. <laughs> this is something. Yeah. News isn't really what I would call it, but it's definitely something. Okay, we need Frank returning into a rag sheet. What do you think? Yeah, do that. No. What about that hits all of them, and then there? Yeah, that gives us a little bit and everything. Gritty stories for the gritty sailor, the Westport Independent. Westport Independent sensational scoops surrounding superstar. Superstar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah, why not? This is our last week, I think, before the bill comes out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Week 12. Zero weeks left until the public culture bill comes into force. Uh-oh. Wow, we've gained a lot of market. Yeah, we did. Whoa, our paper was really popular. <laughs> We're off the meter! And we lowered our suspicion. So, let's see what we get. Oh, this is it. This is the end. 16th of May, 1949. The day of the public culture bill. <clears throat> In the northern suburbs of the Loyalist Party is hosting or er, in the northern suburbs, the Loyalist Party is hosting a small outdoor celebration for the introduction of the public culture bill. A big banner with the words for propri propriety in media hangs over a small stage set up for the event. So far, the celebration has consisted of a small speech from the president, followed by a local children's choir singing in the national anthem. Outside the celebration, loyalist banners and f and flags fly high throughout the entire district. It's a symbol of a unified people with not a single disloyal citizen to be seen throughout the district. Uh -huh. 
The Western districts have always been supportive of the Loyalist government, but it's never been more evident than today. While, I f while a few rebel voices once rang through the district, they are now nothing but a faint memory, long gone from the minds of the people living here. The Loyalist government has clothed the walls of multiple buildings throughout the district with giant banners emblazoned with their emblem. As one walks down the street, an eerie feeling of authority can be felt, ensuring the safety of both you and your neighbors. At the eastern factories, things are the same as always. Workers set off to repeat the same task at the same factory at the same time as the day before. The district runs like clockwork, while people working more strictly and mechanically than the machines themselves. Not much is heard from the rebels in the district these days, save for a few flyers that can be seen lying scattered throughout the streets. The formerly opposing workers have now settled down, returning to their duties once again. Over by the southern docks, small protests have started. While the protesters' numbers are fairly small, their voices can be heard throughout most of the district. The group itself is mostly made up of young men armed with banners and bats. So far, despite their hostile weapons, the group has not performed any violent acts. However, as tension between inhabitants of the district and the police are well known, one can only speculate what will happen once authorities arrive. While the city is as busy as ever, a small newspaper called the Westport Independent soldiers on. The paper has had its fair share of ups and downs lately, but no matter what hardships it faces, it just keeps on standing. Yeah, we're still in business. While the current Westport Independent might show exemplary morals and loyalty, their road to propriety was not without complications. While several of the local papers there were certain individuals who showed a general lack of character, individuals whose difficulties with authority led to both violence and vandalism, <laughs> Frank. Mm. individuals whose misguided and deviant ideals poisoned the minds of those around them, individuals whose selfish behavior undoubtedly posed a danger not only to themselves but to society as a whole, at the Westport Independent, this individual was named Frank. <laughs> wow. Naturally, like other local papers, people like Frank have been removed or re or re-educated, re I'm sorry. Yeah, there you go. To ensure Westport is a shining example of a press of press integrity and responsibility. But what matters is not those who have left. What matters are the dutiful ones re remaining whose can-do spirit delivers truth and cultivation to the public. The paper has also suffered some blemishes on its otherwise spotless record. Months ago, one of these traitors, a journalist of questionable integrity named Julie, not only left the paper, but also the country. Oh. Having studied abroad and been turned by foreign propaganda, authorities believe that she returned home with the intention of spreading subversive, disloyal slander. This is only reinforced by her recent actions overseas, spreading blatant lies about both her native city and country to the local press. The Westport Independent has taken great care to, dis to distance themselves from this dangerous traitor, with several of its employees denying ever having anything to do with Julie. For an example of the staff's loyalty, one only needs to look at one of the publication's rising stars, Phil. <laughs> yeah, Phil. A longtime veteran of the Loyalist Party and the Westport Independent, Phil has quickly adopted the new guidelines of the Public Culture Bill and the LNMA, becoming a shining example for the other members of the team. Besides adhering to the journalistic standards, he has even aided the process in, other, in another way, helping to identify certain rogue elements within the publication. Whoa. This exemplary act of civil courage aided integration greatly. Why, as it stands right now, Phil is both an inspiration for the publication's new employee, employees and an embodiment of the LNMA spirit, who will undoubtedly go far indeed. But it is not just the male employees that stand out. It is female staff or its female staff share inspiring qualities. For example, Anne, a working single mother of one and role model for the LNMA spirit, as a proud citizen of the Eastern Factory District, she embodies the very spirit that drives her 
district clockwork efficiency. In comparison to less devoted female LNMA employees, despite overtime, pay cuts, and the untimely passing of her husband in an industrial accident, Anne has managed to author several of the paper's most successful stories at incredible speed. By both doing the work of herself and even other employees, Anne works tirelessly to both bring the nation its news and is an inspiration to women everywhere. Wow. Well, what do you think about that? I think we had a tyrannical government on accident. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. I told you we had to pick a side. I wonder what would have happened if we would have picked, like, the rebel side, like, the whole time. Oh. If, like, it would have stopped us and given us, like, something similar to this, but with, like, us being rebels. I mean, like, maybe. Do you want to do another one later? Well, let's see what everybody thinks, and maybe we'll get to play this again. If you guys want to see this again, like... Let us know, and maybe we'll play as Rebels, or if you want us to play as Loyalists the whole time, just, you know, leave it down in the comments below, and we'll definitely check it back out. Yeah, this is a fun one. I, I really, I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. It was great. Stop copying me. <laughs> no, you stop copying me. We're going to leave it at that. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And we will see you guys next time. And once again, that was the Westport Independent. On Thank Wolf you. Games. And have a wonderful evening, you beautiful people.